If you have one of these infernal devices, please um, destroy it now. <laughs> or, put, or at least put it on vibrate. Okay, so um, just reminding everybody. Um, I hope everybody slept well, had, had a good dinner last night and everything. Um, I don't think we really have housekeeping. Like yesterday, um, this will be recorded. So if you have a GDPR issues with that, you can leave now, basically. Um, but I, I think we're all good with that. Um, I don't really think we have any housekeeping this morning. So if people could, could take a seat. Um, I guess uh, um, as we get started here, I'm, um, we have a keynote. And I have to introduce Merce Croesus, um, which isn't an easy thing to do. Because these, these plenary speakers, these keynote speakers, they're always distinguished people who've done a lot of important, interesting things. But um, Merce has done a lot of them. So I hope I don't forget anything here, Merce. I'm going I'm to do my best. Um, Merce is at the Barcelona Supercomputing Center. And uh, she's the head of Computational Social Science Program. It's a new program there. And when you think about supercomputing, you usually think about hard sciences. Um, but in social science, that's becoming a bigger deal. And so I can see why they brought Merce in to, to sort of lead that charge. Um, prior to that, she was the Minister of Open Government in Catalonia, so dealing with transparency, open data issues, things that people are probably familiar with. Um, the biggest part of her career was at Harvard in the US, where she was the head of the Institute for Quantitative Social Science. Now, uh, IQSS is best known, at least in sort of metadata circles, for Dataverse which is an open source repository. It's been implemented thousands of times around the world. It's, it, it supports DDI. It's a pretty well-known um, piece of software. And um, that was Mercedes doing. That was her baby. Um, I was just at the user conference in Mexico, and I cannot tell you the, the respect and affection that they, they talk about this woman with. And I, I think it speaks volumes about you when your ex-colleagues say really nice things about you behind your back. Um, but. Uh, Marseille was one of the authors of the FAIR principles, and that's obviously fairly important. Um, but in addition, and I, I guess a little less known, she was the author of the data citation principles. And data citation, you may have seen the poster here, is a pretty big deal in the, in the scientific world because people have been citing publications forever and data sort of gets treated as second class. But that's also an, a sort of internationally recognized standard. Um, Mercedes does not have a background in social science or computer science. She, she was trained as a physicist originally at Harvard and then post, postdoc at, in Barcelona also. No, the other way around. Other way around, okay. I knew I would mess something up here. Sorry, yeah, it's okay, it's okay. Right, Barcelona, and, Red University, Harvard, Manhattan. Okay. It's, it's all good. Um, but last, and, and maybe uh, not, not least, um, she's the new president of, of CoData. She was elected just, just last fall. And um, I can't technically speak on behalf of my colleagues in the secretariat at CoData, but I think I actually can, because we were rooting for you, Marseille. Of all the candidates, and we had good candidates, we were really hoping you would win, and then you did. So, um, so I'd like everybody to give her a very warm welcome and your attention, so Marseille. Uh, thanks so much, Arafan, and uh, well, and thank you, Codeira and Simon, uh, for uh, well having, I guess, high expectations <laughs> from me, but also to welcoming me so well. Uh, thanks also, Frank, for hosting the, uh, this great workshop. I think it's very needed. I hope there are many of them. <laughs> uh, and also, thanks the audience for being here and uh, well. Staying to coming to listen to me, so uh, I, I will talk today um, about the, this new computational social science program at the Barcelona Supercomputing Center. I, I would also like to talk about metadata. I worked on metadata quite a bit on metadata standards and DDI uh, codebook lifecycle and so on. Uh, but there will be less of metadata, although you will see that at the end everything is related to metadata, um, I, as I th as I think. Of. Uh, so, but first you see this picture, I don't know if you see it well, I don't know if any of you have been at the Barcelona Supercomputer Center, uh, it's a national, the Spanish National Center for Computational, uh, Centro Nacional de Computación. Uh, this is a chair, I mean, your eyes are not fooling you, it's a, ch it's a church, and it's, it's not AI, <laughs> it's not a composed <laughs> image of a, uh, a mixing a supercomputer in a church, it is a, a supercomputer inside a church, so it's, it's very interesting to visit, if I, 
uh, well, I invite you all of any of you, uh, you can contact me and I'll give you a tour of the place. But in fact, this uh, supercomputer now is a, it's, it's becoming too slow in some way. So there is a new one, and I will just mention, talk about it uh, in, a, in a bit. But we're, uh, here where uh, there is this supercomputer, this is, uh, is getting changed to become, um, uh, well, it's now, for now there is research on that, but there is gonna become one of the European, one of the five Europeans uh, quantum computer. So uh, I don't, um, well, this, this was um, just recently uh, selected as one of the places for that. So we're, we're excited about if we can make that happen. So uh, t today, though, I'll, I will talk about uh, first uh, introduce the Barcelona Supercomputing Center and the, this program, this new program. Uh, program and department, um, uh, scientific department on social sciences and humanities. I'll, I'll talk about computational social science, uh, the social science part and the computational part, right? What makes it uh, so computational? Um, and, and, and I'll introduce a, an initial research project that we're just, just starting working on. This is just a very recent program since last year. So now we're starting to create the team and starting some projects and grants that we got and so uh, uh, to, um, to work on computational social science and then and, and also computational humanities. Uh, and I'll talk about some data collaborations. And, and so I will start with BSC, but I will finish with CoData. So both are uh, important to me and relevant to what I'm doing. The BSC is my day-to-day -day work, but CoData is also um, what I do uh, whenever there is <laughs> as much time as possible. So uh, that, uh, that will be the talk. And first, on the Barcelona Supercomputing Center. So uh, about 20 years ago, uh, Mateo Valero, the director of, of the Barcelona Supercomputing Center, the first computer science professor at the, at the UPC in Barcelona, uh, the University of Polytechnic of Catalonia. Uh, uh, so started this launch, the, um, this center. Uh, well, first there was the Mare Nostrum one that was the first one that was uh, uh, put inside the church. Uh, and when that was um, ready, then officially the BSC was created. Uh, the, if you see, this is the building now that started with 70 people. Now we're more than a thousand. So you can imagine in 20 years, the growth and we, it keeps growing. I, I plan my department to be quite, quite large. So they still need more space for <laughs> this is, uh, we're running out of space uh, here. Uh, it's a public uh, consortium, 60% of the Spanish government, 30% uh, of the Catalan government, and 10% of, of the universities affiliated with, uh, as I said, with the UPC, the University Polytechnic of Catalonia. Uh, and, and it's uh, not only uh, for, I mean, it's a Spanish national center of computation, but, but it's also one of the Euro HPC of the European consortium of supercomputers. So it's a service to Spanish researchers, but also to researchers in, in all Europe. Uh, the Mare Nostrum 5 just was uh, launched uh, at the end of 20, in December 2023. Uh, it's now the eighth in the world. Uh, if, you, if you look at uh, the locations here, the loc there are six in, in the US of the top 10 based on the list, the top 500 uh, list of supercomputers, right? Um, and there are three in Europe and one in Japan. Uh, and, and it's uh, well, it, it, it's in its peak performance is 300 petaflops, more than 314 petaflops, but uh, that's three and, and 17 uh, zeros, right? And, and the, the, there's also been an increase every year, every time there is a new supercomputer with more use. I mean, there is CPUs and GPUs. It's basically two supercomputers. So with more use of AI, there is more storage also. So it's uh, uh, now more than 600 petabytes of data storage. Uh, the initial use of supercomputers, as Arafan also mentioned, was more for the physics or fluid dynamic simulations in physics, chemistry, uh, or uh, uh, material sciences, or uh, of course, recently with climate change, with biomedicine, and so uh, less with the social sciences. Uh, 
Um, but it, it initially it used less data. Now every time it uses more and more data with more computational methods that, that are uh, based on AI based that uh, that uh, handle large amounts of data. So the, the, in addition to the, the service as a supercomputer, it's also a research organization, and this is when uh, the, the work that I'm doing there, um, uh, well, it, it takes place, right, uh, as, uh, as part of the research organization, but as I said, uh, that until now, the focus has been computer science, um, earth sciences with simulations of climate change, life sciences with digital twins, of, uh, for example, the heart or the for for precision medicine and so, and engineering to also uh, provide tools and well, uh, software simulations for uh, apply to many uh, to apply sciences and engineering, but uh, with the new computational social science program. Uh, the vision we have is that we is to prepare uh, social science and humanities to benefit benefit from also the age of data and AI as biomedicine, uh, cl uh, climate, well, their sciences are doing right, by uh, health and biosciences are doing. Um, also increase the collaboration between com social scientists and computer scientists. I don't mean that this is not happening yet, but uh, we want it to happen more, and it depends on where you go, it happens less and less, depends on what uh, area, what regions, and what, um, what parts of the world. Uh, facilitate the use of high-performance computing, um, uh, to social science researchers, so uh, th there is a, a factor also of being afraid sometimes of just going and use a, a supercomputer. Uh, most social science researchers would go to, well, either would work on their own uh, cluster, uh, university cluster, or, or, or um, workstation, or, so, or uh, use a, cl a cloud computing, but the supercomputing centers, even in the US and in other parts of the world, they are not thought as much for, uh, for social science research. Um, and, and, uh, and that means sometimes not to have the tools or the type of support that you need uh, with the expertise also in social sciences to, to help uh, uh, modify the, the code, prepare the data uh, for, for parallelizing, well, to parallelize your, your code for, for uh, optimizing uh, and make um, the, the analysis more efficient, right? Uh, and at the end, what we want with that also as a national center is to apply the social science research to, uh, to assist or to inform po uh, policy making, decision making uh, in, the, in the government and uh, local governments, etc. So uh, this crowd knows what social sciences uh, uh, are and, and what it includes, but uh, often it gets, um, it, it gets it doesn't get recognized how wide the field is, right? And especially if you talk to computer scientists, they think it's only sociology often, or, or that it's only one of the disciplines in social sciences, but not everything. I like, usually as a physicist, the way I, uh, my perspective in social science is uh, how Gelman uh, physics uh, put it, that uh, imagine how hard physics would be if particles could think. So uh, I started my career in physics and astrophysics, but I'm delighted to be uh, at least contributing the way I can to social sciences because it's much much more complex, um, and that's always a challenge. So um, yeah, uh, what what do we mean though in the program? How, what do we support for social sciences? I don't expect you to read every one of these disciplines, but just uh, as the UNESCO and how uh, also the European Union uh, takes the definition of social science and human well, uh, puts social science together with, uh, with humanities uh, in many of the programs, so as, as SSH, right? And it includes, includes all these disciplines. As, as I said, it, this is many, many disciplines. I don't, I don't pretend that all of them can benefit from high-performance computing, but some of them can if they have enough. Uh, data. Uh, we see in archaeology uh, a lot of data uh, uh, collection that, that could use, well, applying AI and, and using uh, more computational intensive met methods could also, um, uh, well, it could benefit. But uh, I'm not going to read all the disciplines, but these are 
um, the disciplines included. Here also uh, with uh, this audience, you, you know uh, very well about the data that has been used in social sciences, but just a, a very brief summary as a, uh, again, I don't, uh, this is not, doesn't pretend to be an exhaustive um, or comprehensive, uh, well, description or history of the data that has been used for social sciences, but uh, as you know, census data comes from, well, started already, at least for the information that I got, or for what I know, started already in, in Babylon in uh, the very first um, uh, census, right? Uh, 4,000 uh, years from now, almost. And, uh, and then there were initial, some initial registrations and so uh, in the 1600s, but then uh, the uh, statistics offices um, well, became more uh, standardized, more uh, part of uh, almost every country, every nation in the world has, like, I think, except two or three, maybe, or five. Um, but you know more that than, than me, but uh, I think what is interesting in social sciences then there was uh, the, the, uh, the uh, real re revolution or the statistical revolution, right, from the, uh, from the early 20s. And uh, George uh, Alter, for example, would explain that, <laughs> I'm sure, better than me, and has been part of that, uh, the, uh, with ICPSR, part of this uh, growth. But, but uh, the data archives and the, the well, the research data repositories have, have helped in addition to all the statistical offices to provide a lot of data for social science research. And then in the 2000, I, again, I don't need to go through each one of them. Uh, I, um, and, and, and of course, I, I, I mentioned here I, the Institute for Quantitative Social Sciences is where I worked for about almost 20 years, 17 years or so uh, at the end, right? But, uh, but Another big change, or we could call another big revolution, is the one that we, we're seeing more now is uh, AI, not only AI methods, you know AI is uh, people defining it so many ways. I don't, when I talk about AI, I'm not, I don't mean chat GPT and generative AI. I just mean all the machine learning methods that have been used from uh, about 15, uh, uh, almost 20 years ago in social sciences, uh, and with data that comes from uh, well, from, from smartphones, from apps, from social media, from uh, just the entire web, from sensors, from satellites, etc., and also data from industry that sometimes we have, uh, we don't use, I, uh, as I would talk to, uh, enough, uh, or we don't have enough access for research and could be uh, very useful in many cases. So one of the, the key papers on computational social science was uh, some Many of the colleagues are at Harvard University. Well, at that point, we're in Harvard. They are now uh, many places, but David Lazar, Gary King, uh, Nicholas Christakis, and so from the social sciences, but working with a lot of uh, computational um, scientists and uh, computational work. And basically, uh, the, the the vision or the, the what what they they saw that work was already happening is that we our life is now in the network we're living a digital trace we have a lot more data uh, that that uh, can describe the interactions the between humans between uh, organizations and so and and all that data if we use it responsibly and well could benefit for uh, to social science research in addition to uh, survey data and all the, the statistics, official uh, statistics data that that have been used. Uh, I mean, in combination, not one to replace the other, but uh, but in combination, right? Uh, and that would mean that these uh, massive amounts of data that have been used already in biology and physics and have transformed those fields could transform also the social sciences. So uh, here, what uh, for the program that we're starting at BSc. We're thinking of, uh, in this way that the, our data is uh, from many sectors, from many sources. Uh, the official statistics data, of, uh, of course, uh, as I'll show one of the first projects we start, it uses uh, micro data from 156 countries. Uh, from the, but there is a lot of generated research data, data from, from the um, data archives and, and, and from, or from experiments and so that, that come, that are shared in now many repositories, right? But there is also all the big data can, 
uh, be used for that. And then the combination of the interoperability among these data sets is not, uh, it's not at all straightforward. Sometimes it's not even desirable or needed, but, but many times if we can at least uh, harmonize the, the some variables or indicators to, to uh, be able to use uh, those data in combination, that would be great. And part of the, the work, one of the, the, the areas of work in the, um, in the program, so computational social science, would be to provide that kind of support, right, to help harmonize that metadata, help us standardize uh, new vocabularies that are created, because when we start using big data, then uh, we need to annotate it and, and create vocabularies that are, we need to that are become new vocabularies, vocabularies and need to standardize with with others uh, that are, that exist already and and in the well in this case there is still a lot of work because almost any research project creates its own vocabulary yeah, from uh, semi -stru uh, structure or unstructured data. Uh, and also uh, uh, see how we bring our uh, public and private data partnerships to, to help uh, social science research. Uh, for the computation, I mean, that was the social science part, the computational part, the, the, the intent, computational intensive part. So first you start from the history of what uh, has happened. And now most of that, even, even though since the 20s there was the revolution of using, applying a statistics during causal inference, uh, many, the design of many models, uh, statistical models to, to uh, enhance social sciences, uh, but linear uh, regression and simple linear regression uh, is still the most, by far the most commonly used. And it's understood is the is the easiest. Sometimes it's a, is sufficient to explain what you want. Uh, but uh, this uh, this study this in preprint still uh, did a, um, uh, an analysis of um, well more than a million articles uh, from from the web of science uh, to to actually. Uh, uh, looking in the, into the methods uh, sections to see um, when, and using machine learning to, um, well, text analysis basically, NLP, and so to, to look at the prevalence of uh, linear uh, regression models or, uh, well, methods uh, in social sciences. And, it was, and it found that it was at least 60% of them use that. But uh, growingly, uh, we see a lot of other me computational methods that are, are being applied to social sciences, uh, more and more uh, uh, ML and NLP used, uh, and, and now recently with, uh, with LLMs, right, used for uh, not only for text analysis, but for image and video, uh, treating text as data, right, uh, also regressions analysis, I mean, it's still statistical models that are more complex that require more computational uh, uh, effort right, uh, capacity like multi-level models, um, and and also comp the the from the complexity science um, perspective, right, lo looking at social network analysis, looking at uh, agent-based uh, modeling and scaling theories, and so apply to social sciences. So we see this change. Uh, one of the, the books that I also like to follow for uh, the work that social science uh, is doing or the, 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 the fr uh, framework, a machine learning framework for social sciences, this one takes us data with um, some of you might, might know, uh, Grimmer, Roberts, and Stewart. They happen to be all uh, PhD students uh, that were at IQSS while I was there. Uh, and they worked a lot uh, uh, with, uh, with with machine learning applied to to text for political science, and and that uh, the, the working with uh, text as data changes uh, the way we we well even though science is never linear is is really never the deductive model from theory to hypothesis to data collection and so uh, to the results, but but um, but even more with this type of uh, big data and looking at text from all the web. And so uh, there is a phase of exploration or, or discovery from the text that can give you some, uh, can inform you of the conceptual model, basically, that you want to, that would be the, your theory. And, and there is an iterative process in the beginning to figure out, 
the, the theory based on the data that you see. It's not that the data drives the science, but, but it does inform about what po uh, potential conceptual model you can you, uh, become your hypothesis. And then uh, you, uh, the, the, the only thing you cannot do is the mistake of using the same data that gave you the discovery to validate then uh, your hypothesis, right? Then you need to go and find other text data that validates that hypothesis. But that's, that's the, the new process. Uh, the same for uh, relevant also to computational sci sci uh, science, social sciences. It's not only the text analysis, image analysis, and so uh, with machine learning, but it's also simulations that had been used in uh, in physics and in other fields or in organi bi uh, biological organisms, but now apply to social behavior. I mean, I say now, of course, people have experimented that for for decades, but uh, but there is. Um, I, I, this is an abstract of this book, the recent book from uh, Polos Maldino, uh, that has a good summary of modeling social behavior with agent-based modeling. But uh, but uh, uh, now there is um, uh, a growth in using simulations in uh, for social behavior for for uh, different level. Well, for doing interactions or modeling interactions in society, whether it's pol in political communication or. Uh, or in other, uh, or in economy, uh, economics or so, but just to, um, because uh, the, the models have become better, there is more computational capacity, there is more data to inform what the, the agent base, the, 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 the agents basically, how we sh they should behave, and there is the combination of large language models with with agent-based models that are, that are, are starting, well, fine-tune uh, LLMs with agent-based models are starting to help with that. With all these, while well, we do computational social sciences, uh, we, we do it with, uh, with science in mind, and especially open science in mind, right? Uh, so still, i like to, to follow um, some of these, uh, well, pillars or, or, or principles of the scientific approach that are from the book from Designing Social Inquiry from Gary King and, and Sid Verba. Sid Verba and, and Gary King were my mentors are at Harvard for, for learning social sciences in some way, although uh, there have been many others too. Um, but, but basically, they still do not forget the goal is inference, right? Whether it's descriptive, uh, predictive, explanatory inference, but, um, but it's a goal of science. Uh, the, the, pro the procedures and the data and the code and so on need to be public, right? Um, uh, and it needs to be done in a way that can be verified, or can be validated, can be uh, uh, the others can assess. Uh, can I mean it's uh, related to all the fair principles, right? That that uh, before way before the fair principles, uh, we knew that uh, research scientific re um, results, this scientific discovery had to be uh, published in a way or, or shared in a way that others could reproduce and could. Um, uh, could validate, and it doesn't mean that they, they, that everything reproduces exactly. But but at least you need to enable that reproduction, uh, reproduction, and and taking into account that the conclusions have uncertainty. If, if what you say that this is a result, this result is absolute, uh, is, is completely deterministic. That's uh, not science, even in physics. Um, um, and then uh, the content is the method, so so it can apply to humanity, so to any uh, any field that that you want to do inference, to, if you you can apply a scientific approach, right? Uh, the initial areas of research, as I said, uh, I, I would describe a few. Well, first, uh, in, uh, these areas of research that the, the social science uh, in Barcelona supercomputing are starting, but uh, but also I'll give a couple of examples of, of work that of uh, some of these projects. So some of the work is on households and. Uh, populations, living arrangements in particular, uh, some is an, in political science and, uh, and uh, political communication, so for social media diets, uh, how, how that impacts uh, democracy, the quality of democracy, uh, polarization, misinformation, etc., uh, and, and public opinion. Um, 
the actual work on on your um, well from law on on applying AI to uh, help to find um, the uh, conflicts across laws uh, within a nation or some na uh, national level or um, uh, also work on, on he, uh, well uh, archival text uh, and from his for history and for uh, mixed with AI and cultural heritage uh, also in man management science social ecology and social urbanism and and also in social innovation uh, for public policy in particular in uh, Finding social well, determining new social services and and apply to education, and also to labor market. But uh, a few of the examples here, uh, the the what we call the LA project, the living arrangement project, uh, which uses uh, the well, what it, what it tries to first find is the evolution of living arrangements of how how do how would you. Uh, well, predictor for for each uh, individual, what um, what would be how much time would he spend in life living alone, living with uh, a family of what size, with what uh, with children, with elderly, etc. And and the, that this done at the level and the individual level, uh, but uh, but also. Uh, compare the uh, household level at the multi, uh, at the some national regional level and at the national level, right? With this um, uh, a worldwide multi-level uh, regression um, analysis, which is very uh, well uh, intensive compute, uh, computationally, and it uses also a lot of data. It's a hundred mi uh, fifty million individual records. Uh, that represent 98% of the world's population. Uh, this is in con uh, collaboration with the Center of, uh, of Demographic Studies in the Autonoma of Barcelona the, and, uh, and with Fundació Caixa. And Albert Steve, who has been, uh, the, well, uh, the co-PI who has been uh, in IPUMS for a long time, for a long time in, the, uh, in Minnesota, uh, has created this uh, co-residence database, which, um, which has household uh, levels indicators at the national and subnational level, um, and which is the original da uh, data that we're using uh, to start this project, and it integrates four main repositories. And, and it, uh, if you look at the details, I, I'm not going to go into detail uh, on that, but from this paper that was published recently, uh, that, that you, you look at the, the data section, the method section, how they harmonize the indicators and all the work that, that it challenging work that, that, uh, that was done to accomplish that, that not all, well, uh, again, I won't go into a lot more details. Uh, there is another project that we're starting that is uh, using social media data from uh, the five main platforms, right? Uh, and just to, to determine how the, the, uh, the, our relation with nature in the, in the real world, how it compares into the relation, these uh, nature values in the digital world, how, do, how, the, how we, we share uh, information about nature, and so does it have a, a, a multiplying effect, uh, an enhanced effect, and it translates to to foster environmental stewardship. This is with Johannes Langemeyer, uh, social ecologist, that is also coming to to BSC. Um, uh, also in, in the historical archives, it, ha it, it so happens that in Catalonia there are. Uh, some of the largest digital, digitalized already uh, the te texts or the documents and archives from the 13th century to the 15th century that uh, although they are digitalized, uh, you still OCR cannot be applied to it, the calligraphy is difficult, so we're, we're using some uh, very recent methods, uh, AI methods uh, for boxing the well for uh, processing or, or um, finding patterns in uh, in the images to be able to uh, transcribe all these texts. Uh, uh, there is an impressive archive of 17 kilometers of the, uh, of books and books that are uh, nice to see that. Um, uh, that have well a lot of them it could it could bring 
uh, a lot of uh, research in, in medieval hist history research, but also inform some of the, uh, the, 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 well, some of the work now that is research now uh, in understanding um, regional uh, conflicts. And so from doing those studies, right, that, that would be very interesting. There is also um, the work that we're doing with the Aguirre Alejandra Caria Center, uh, Gorka Espiao and Izier Moreno on uh, proposing a new um, workflow to work closely with the public administration to, for when we have when we want to do social innovation in complex problems, where uh, data the, not only the data that they have um, uh, public administration data is necessary, but also data from other sources and to be combined and helping with simulations also uh, of of the, the, the and to provide different scenarios of what could be done, what social innovation could be done to, to, to design what, what interventions, what experiments one could bring to the real world and find the solutions. I, I'm going to go into that also quickly because I know I don't have a lot of time, but um, the, the, the part of the platform or the, the, the support that we will provide as part of the, the computational social science would be to, to have these tools and services. There is a data platform, a social simulations platform, and the experiments platform that supports the computational methods, the HPC, and the research area, but that translates uh, to public uh, policy. Uh, there is more detail on, the, on all these platforms here that um, you know, I'm, I'm not going to go into each one of these uh, elements, but, but basically that one, one is fed by data science uh, um, activities, right? Uh, tasks that the, the data platform to be able to share um, Compute, well, data that is used in computational social science, very large data sets, integrated with HPC, uh, ready to apply computational methods. And so, uh, and the work on sensitive data will come later on, not yet. Uh, the, the work on social simulations based on complexity science and the work of uh, experiments platform mostly to the, to help design randomized control trials in a in an easier way facilitate that that type of the type of experiments uh, in a responsible um, uh, but also efficient way. So uh, we start with that with a Dataverse uh, platform. How why how not uh, how could it be another way right <laughs> to to an installation of the open source uh, Dataverse software to bring uh, uh, social science and humanities and HPC data platform so integrated uh, well to support large data sets and also to support the metadata for uh, a public private data partnership uh, that, that would uh, would provide. Uh, um, assistance to social science research. Uh, this, of course, all supports uh, the FAIR principles as, as it is designed already by, uh, well, at least a, lo a lot by the, already the software, the repository itself, but, if, but the additional uh, metadata or the curation that is needed to, to further support the interoperability, of course, needs to be added to the repository. Uh, this uh, is part of a collaboration of the BSC with Harvard, uh, with Harvard on the Dataverse, the also OpenDP for differential privacy uh, tools uh, applied to, to do an analysis without accessing the raw data, which already the U.S. Census uh, has, uh, is using and is collaborating with. Um, and also lately IQSS is working on fine-tuning LLMs also to, uh, for research in social science and, and the, uh, based on data, metadata from social science from, from the Harvard Dataverse. Uh, the, the European level will uh, coordinate with, um, with the humanities infrastructures like, uh, like Clar Clar Clarin and Daria, or Claria together, uh, the, the social science humanities open cloud and, and Spain is not yet part of CES, so that is one of the things that I, I'm promoting to see if uh, Spain can become part of CES. Spain is also not part of Codera, but <laughs> hopefully very soon it will be. Um, uh, well, it, it's the plan. Um, and so I end with Codera, uh, as I said, as the international, uh, well, collaboration on, on data from, with, 
with the social science, uh, well, with BSc, with the Barcelona Supercomputing Center. Uh, but the, the main things, I mean, yesterday, if you heard Simon in the uh, Simon Hudson, the director of Codata, in the reception. Uh, you you learn a little bit about Codata uh, already. Uh, I think uh, to me the para, two main things that are important is that it helps. Uh, well, one of the the, the missions of, of Codata is to uh, to empower science to address universal challenges through transparent, trustworthy, and equitable use of data and information. Right. But, uh, but uh, it does that working closely with the UN, UNESCO, OECD, right, to, to provide, uh, well, helping together provide recommendations on how you use and share data and how to improve open science, and especially open and data and open code. Uh, the four priorities, making data work, improving data policies, advancing data science, and enhancing data skills is what we're working on, and especially to... Uh, key initiatives, the welfare and world, which now will start as Welfare Plus, the cross-domain interoperability uh, framework that also Arafan talked about. Um, and the, the very important to me with all the work that we're doing also is the International Data Policy Committee, um, providing data, uh, data policy and ethics, uh, data ethics, uh, as we're working uh, with large and large amounts of data uh, more complex uh, computational methods based on AI, and so how do we do that uh, ethically and following the best practices? So conclusions, if I still have time for conclusions. No, uh, so, so <laughs> yeah, I, do you, are you going to put the, uh, come and get me? No, no, no still, not yet the scary face. Uh, I was told that I was going to give a, give a nice scary face if I would pass the time. So, um, yeah, so uh, as a conclusion, social science uh, are more needed than ever. With a lot, when we talk about climate change, with the uh, uh, quality of democracy, with many of the the high, the very well, the large challenges, um, uh, some existential challenges that we have now. Social science is a big part of the needs to be, be part of the solution too. Um, uh, the, but uh, at the same time, more amounts uh, of data are available for, for um, and, uh, and more software, uh, better software basically, and with applied methods are available, more computational power is available, and with all these, uh, we are, uh, as computational social science, as a, is a field that is growing, uh, and we, we have a chance to combine all these data to also improve what has been tried for a while, but not yet uh, sufficiently successful uh, to see how we can model some, not, not the entire society, but some aspects of human behavior, of interactions that can help us to, to uh, provide uh, scenarios of what, how we could make, what changes we could make in public policy, in social services, uh, uh, in in decision making, so that um, that we well we could uh, create some more social innovation and, and public more. Uh, inform public policy based on those simulations and also combine with, in some cases, with conducting experiments. Uh, the, the, all these, though, uh, all these use of data from uh, these multiple so uh, uh, sources requires not only the harmonization of indicators for, uh, and variables and so from, from uh, official statistics, but now from also other sources uh, of um, data sets, from, uh, some from industry, some from research generated by research, some from the public sector, uh, uh, which no, it's not all uh, well structured and, and documented. So um, uh, there is uh, that, that challenge still at the end, though I think we, to conclude with the work or the proposed here, some of the work proposed here in, the, in this workshop, in this conference, is that at the end, it's everything about data. I, I think that maybe as the strategies from Clinton said uh, in 1992, uh, it's not that it's economy stupid, it's, uh, it's metadata stupid. <laughs> I don't know if you know that reference, but it's all about metadata. So thank you.
So um, we have time for a couple of quick questions, if anyone has one. So show of hands. Hello, Mayor Arafan, thank you. Thank you very much for this talk. Uh, I was just wondering, um, perhaps I overheard it, but you have not mentioned the European Data Science Cloud, which uh, has actually a very similar orientation and might be an overarching umbrella open uh, also for, for what you intend to do. And I think it brings together actually all the activities across Europe that enable science to use data in a fair way. And uh, it would be a pity if there are no synergies to, uh, to be aware of and exploit it, because right. I think the direction is very similar. But perhaps you have mentioned it, and I overheard no, it. I, I Thank did you. not mention it. It's true, because I was focusing. Uh, I mean, I, I, I think I agree. Uh, I'd be very happy to discuss it more. But, but uh, there is no intention to replicate any of the efforts, but to work with some of these initiatives that are already happening. I was focusing a lot on the uh, infrastructure, European infrastructure and also international infrastructures that focus about social science and itself. And I know, well, for the data, data science can be applied to, it is one aspect that we that we need to introduce right as part of the so the computational social science but I, I didn't mention because there are many data science initiatives that are broader than the impact well the to, to be applied to social science and humanities but maybe i'm wrong about that but uh, anyway in in any case even if you did mention it, I, it makes a lot of sense to to also be part of that and to uh, well share efforts or collaborate and have uh, not, not duplicate what, is, what we're doing. Yeah. But if you have any more comments, I don't know if the, 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 for the Open Data Science Club, if it's broader than social sciences in some way, right? It's okay to we talk about it later? Yeah, 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 good, thanks. Any other questions? Oh. Who was first? Hi. Uh, you have mentioned that uh, there is a um, kind of a, a, a desire to blend um, official statistics data and the, the new and emerging sources of data. Um, and yeah, I, I subscribe fully do, to that. I, I was wondering what you didn't necessarily mention, how you see the official statisticians community and the scientific community working together because there's probably much more to, to share between these communities I think that's than a, the data itself. And, the, and there is a yeah. lot of wealth that could be transferred from. from right, uh, the, that is a great idea. Uh, I, I I think, well, it's true that I didn't cover uh, everything. I didn't look, uh, well, I didn't talk as much about what what I, I think still needs to happen to to, to bring this type of collaborations. But I think that's a great idea. And part of uh, that I'm really, really happy to be here uh, is to get, become more involved with this community because, uh, uh, well, from, uh, I have been, um, in the last 20 years, more involved with the, all the, the data archives and, and uh, social science data repositories, uh, community that, or the DDI community, and as Arafan also was saying, sometimes there are these two <laughs> communities, right? Even if it's the metadata standards, but also in the way they work, that they don't talk enough to each other. But I think that would be a huge benefit. It's one of the things that I, I learned and I thank this uh, conference for, because uh, that's completely necessary. And I see, it. I even was trying to contract, to hire some people from this community <laughs> to, <laughs> to come to my, uh, to, to the team, uh, BSE, so if any of you are interested, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> okay, we, we have time for one more question before coffee. If I'm sorry about that, I went over. Uh, That's time. okay. But. Yeah, uh, Matthias Juk, uh, Statistics Netherlands. Uh, yeah, it's maybe not directly related to your presentation because it was about the supercomputing and, and, and stuff like that, but I, am, I wonder, uh, because in certain areas of research, uh, there is more and more, uh, how to say, emphasis on the distributed 
uh, data research, like in medical yeah. or, mm -hmm. or, I don't know, Green Deal and, and stuff like that, or mobility, uh, because of the sensitivity of data or nature of how data is actually, you know, distributed. So, so do you see this uh, as a trend in, in, in data science research? And uh, this is related to the European data spaces approaches and stuff right, like that. Right, right, right. Thank you. And you, you, when you, the thing is that well, when you say distributed, it could mean at different levels. So you're talking about repositories that are distributed, for example, and they can be federated. Is that part of it? Yeah, uh, federated uh, data because repositories. Because one thing is distributed at the data level, the other at the computational level. Uh, uh, I, I think there is no question that that there will be multiple repositories uh, that would uh, I, I even well I didn't go into the details but but even the, the repository that were building the ideas to harvest the metadata from other repositories uh, to federate data whenever necessary for HPC you need to have the data in house right so at the time of computing then you build, you you work on it you you need to bring the data the data but uh, and that's what part of that you get higher performance I mean part, part of high performance performance computing, what it is, is that systems integration is, is, very, is essential, that, that it's not loose, that you cannot, you're not distributing the computing, in the, you're, you're, you're uh, decreasing the latency as much as possible, right, to make it uh, fast. So uh, in, in this case, and, and at the same time, you parallelize uh, to, to, well, to, to do it in um, multi-thread, well, to, to, to be able to uh, compute uh, not not sequentially, but uh, in a, in well in parallelization. So uh, although uh, anyway, so I think that the distributed in for a lot of these cases, the distributed data is is key in terms of distributed computing. I know that uh, in some cases it's it's a good use is is the right way to do it but uh, here with the uh, with the supercomputing centers where where i think what we're bringing as a benefit is uh, uh, i mean I, I didn't give you some numbers but for example for the project with the living arrangements and population data with a cluster uh, uh, just using only 5% of the data takes about a week to run any any model so well, now we can do it in minutes in a in a supercomputer in an HPC, right? I mean, what do you do in your laptop uh, that would take um, like 45, 50 years? It would take one hour at the Barcelona supercomputer at the Mare Nostrum five. Uh, so it, it's about the speed of some models uh, that not only require a lot of data but require a lot of computing to do it faster. And in this case, it's not distributed in the sense of distributed computing, but it's distributed data. I hope that, hey, so the data spaces, yeah, they can exist distributed for the data. And so uh, I think the, the model would be then to bring the data in the right, in the place at the time of computing. So I think we're, we're a few minutes over. Um, I'd like to, so we can break for coffee. Upstairs, I'd like to remind people that we have the poster session, so please go take a look there. And um, we'll be back. Should we cut it to 10 minutes? For, uh, does that make sense? Coffee break? No, no, we're back quarter two. Oh, it's quarter two. Oh, God. We have all kinds of time. Think more questions? No. <laughs> I'm happy to talk to you in the coffee. Thank you, Lisa.